Hello, and welcome to another episode of Brian's Criterion. This week's episode is a review of the devastatingly beautiful Criterion Blu-ray, In the Mood for Love. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you are loving these Criterion reviews. So just off the bat here, uh, I just want to be crystal clear that this review is for the Blu-ray Criterion copy. Uh, This is not a review of the recently released 4K version of the set. Although I would imagine that they're pretty similar. As per usual with Criterion Blu-ray, the case is heavy and does not feel cheap. Typically when I feel the girth of a Blu-ray, I know I'm in for a good set. The artwork on the cover is gorgeous as always, highlighting one of the most famous shots from the film. Inside the case you get a near 50 page booklet. The booklet contains a four page essay from author Steve Erickson entitled Haunted Heart. While a little bit on the short side, it's still expertly written. The rest of the 45 pages or so are filled out with a short story written by Lu Yi Chang entitled Intersection. This short story served as the main inspiration for Wong in making In the Mood for Love. With both the essay from Erickson and the 40 page short story from Chang, this 50 page booklet is nothing short of magnificent. Now let's talk about the content that exists on the disc. On the disc there are a couple featurettes, some deleted scenes and or extended scenes, uh, a short film, and lastly some TV spots and trailers. The featurettes include an hour long behind the scenes making of called At In The Mood For Love, which pretty much rules. I had no idea about how the story evolved from like being a goofy romantic comedy to a full blown drama, or the fact that it took them 15 months to shoot with no script, like it's crazy. Another feature is a 45 minute panel from the Toronto Film Festival. Unfortunately, the panel doesn't include Wong, but it does include actors Tony Leung and Maggie Chung. It's interesting to see both of these actors talk about the film. And in fact, I kind of found it funny that Maggie basically carries this whole panel on her back while Tony rarely contributes and his answers are like short and straight to the point. He seemed very tired and bored, but I kind of love that. Next up, there is a 25-minute interview with uh, Wong Kar Wai, and just like the hour-long behind-the-scenes featurette mentioned earlier, it's a great insight on how this film came to be and the experience making it. Moving along, there are two interviews with Tony Raines. The first interview runs about 25 minutes, and it's uh, all about his love for the film. In the second interview, Raines dives into discussing the music of the film. The last two things on the disc are deleted scenes and a short film. The deleted scenes in total are about 30 minutes or so, and uh, most of them are kind of just extended scenes. Although the most interesting of the deleted scenes is actually an alternate ending, which I will not spoil here. But needless to say, I'm kind of bummed that he didn't include the alternate ending because it's actually more heartbreaking and brilliant. Lastly, there's a short film by Wong that lasts about two and a half minutes and is basically just a montage of old archival footage edited to uh, a music track. All right, that about rounds out the special features on the disc, so let's briefly talk about the film. The plot synopsis from IMDb reads, Two neighbors form a strong bond after both suspect extramarital activities of their spouses. However, they agree to keep their bond platonic so as to not commit similar wrongs. In the Mood for Love is like one of those infamous films that people bring up time and time again. And finally in 2023, I sat down to watch both In the Mood for Love and Chungking Express. I started with Express and I thought it was great. My only complaint with Express is that if I had to hear California Dreaming one more time, I was going to bash my head into a brick wall until I fell into a coma. After Express, I finally moved on to watching In the Mood for Love and what can I say? Everything that's been said about this movie is true. It's brilliant and easily one of the best films from that era. The performances from Tony and Maggie are restrained, delicate, and somber. The setting and locations add to the tone of the film, whether it's a motel room or a dark alley, it all adds to the loneliness. And you know, one of the things I was looking forward to witnessing after hearing everyone talk about it was actually the use of color. And holy Jesus, you guys, the use of color in this film is off the charts. The rich greens, the yellows, and the reds, they just soak every frame, and it made my nerdy brain go crazy. I freaking loved it. I also love the use of music in slow motion. You know, I'll I'll never forget the moments where the two characters, you know, pass each other on the way to the market, glancing at each other as they pass, all in glorious slow motion, and like the wonderful score exploding onto the scene. So, so good. All in all, I don't really have too much more to say, because I mean, this movie's been, you know, dissected and talked about for like, what, the last like 20 years. So um, I just want to say I really loved it, and I now see why people hold it in high esteem. 
Uh, my next thing is I want to watch 2046 and uh, some of Wong's earlier work, and I can't wait. As I wrap up here, I just want to say that this Blu-ray is fantastic. It's loaded with special features, has a 50-page booklet, and the movie is one of the best movies from the 2000s. Definitely worth your time and your money. Okay, that's it, folks. Until the next review, I say cheers. Cheers.